Buongiorno YouTube, it's Trevor here, Summit or Nothing, out today in the garden. It's once again time to have a look at your top 10 favourite tents as voted by you. The last time I done this was 2020, uh, a lot more people took part this time, so the results are slightly different. If you are interested in any of the tents that I mentioned in this video, then please check out the video description below because there will be links. If you are new to Summit or Nothing, we are a hiking, backpacking and uh, wild camping channel. So please be sure to check us out and don't forget to like and subscribe, blah, blah, blah. So we're going to get straight on with the, talk, with the tent reviews. There will be a little bit of talk discussing things such as hydrostatic heads, basically how waterproof or water resistant the tents are and how they test it is they put a cylinder onto the tent fabric and they fill it up with water and however many millimeters 1000 2000 3000 they get to before water starts seeping through that is the hydrostatic head anyway without further ado i think it's time that we discussed your top 10 favorite tents first off at number 10 it's one of my favourite little tents, I must admit. It's the Nature Hike Vic 1. It's a great, fun little tent. It is a summer tent, really. It is. I did take it out the other week in the, the cold wind and rain. It was cold, but it did keep me dry, surprisingly, so it did perform better than I had expected. It's a single skin tent. It's really lightweight. It's really easy to put up. It goes up within minutes. It's really the quickest tent I've got to put up. It's self-supporting, freestanding, so when you put it up you can easily manoeuvre it, put it around to change the positions. It weighs in at a, an impressive 1.09 kilograms without the ground sheet but I've took it out so many times without the ground sheet actually the older model that I've got doesn't even have a ground sheet the cons are that there is slight condensation issues but you probably wouldn't want to use it through the winter so it's really a fair weather tent and even though it's a, a nice side opening door there's only the one on the other side there's just like a tiny little slit so you can just slip things through to keep in the vestibule on the other side and it only comes in grey it's a, a nylon waterproof coating with a hydrostatic head of 2000 so not too bad not too shabby number nine is the msr hubba hubba now this free season two-man tent has two large side entry doors it's a minimum weight of 1.54 kilograms. It comes in grey, like a light grey and a dark green as well. So if you did want to go down the stealth camping route, you have got the uh, dark green option. Again, it's a freestanding tent. It's 20D ripstop nylon with a hydrostatic head of only 1,000 to 1,500, which doesn't sound that impressive, but it is still water resistant. I'm not 100% sure if it's an outer first. It's not a tent I've ever used myself. Um, so I'm not sure if you can put the outer skin up first in wet conditions. I know with the free light, the MSR free light that I have, that you can't, which is a real shame. Number eight is a quality little budget tent. I used to have one. It's the OEX Fox 2. Uh, at 90 pounds, this is a great little budget tent. It's a great starter tent. It's a tunnel tent, it's not freestanding, so once you put it up, you, you want to hope that it's in the right position. Although, being a tunnel tent, it is low to the ground, and they do sort of hold their own in adverse weather. It's got two side doors. The downside of the OEX Fox 2 is that you have to put the inner skin up first, so if it is latching down your inner skin, it's going to get completely soaked until you put up the outer skin, which is not ideal. It's a little bit on the heavy side, over two kilograms, but that's only because it's got the hefty fly sheet. And actually, one of the best fly sheets in this list, as it has a 5,000 millimeter hydrostatic head, and well worth looking at if you are just starting out camping. Number seven next is the MSR Elixir. At £290, this is sort of the cheaper option to the MSR Hubba Hubba. Now, I know in the past, when I've mentioned these, I've always mentioned about Tom when we went out camping and the wind blew. We both got sort of knocked down and his poles all bent, but the MSR did replace them really quickly. It's not as lightweight as the MSR Hubba Hubba, 
it's 2.7 kilograms fully packed uh, with a minimum of 2.24 kilograms if you get rid of all the packaging and what have you. It's a 68D ripstop nylon fly with a hydrostatic head of 1500 millimeters but its geodesic pole structure does mean that it will withstand quite a lot of wind and it has again two side entrance doors which people always find quite handy number six it's another tent that i haven't actually seen or used myself it's the wild country helm now this is a sort of a mid-ranged tent price as well at 260 pounds uh, but it was awarded Trail Magazine's Best Value Award. It's a free season dome tent with two poles that cross over. So it's not geodesic like some of the tents where they cross like that, like at an angle. These are back across. <laughs> Does that make sense? It weighs in at 2.35 kilograms. So again, it's just over the two kilograms. A lot of people look for that sort of thing, want a, a tent that stays in under the two kilograms. It's again, the 68D ripstop nylon, but this has a 4,000 millimeter hydrostatic head fly sheet. So even though it says it's the same as the Elixir, it's got a better hydrostatic head not quite sure how that works superflex alloy poles and pegs and it comes in a nice sort of stealthy green cons are uh, apparently there's only one entrance but it is easy to put up and it is freestanding anyway that was number six wild country helm number five this is the first tent to feature here that was from last year's top ten it, last year it came in at number two this year it's number five it's the van gogh banshee now again it's another tunnel tent a uh, tent that i used to have well i still got it but I, I hardly ever use it but unlike the oex fox 2 the banshee can be put up with the inner and outer skin first so it's a great option for that it's not the most expensive tent and uh, 2.39 kilograms it's not the lightest but it's by no means the heaviest it has two side entrances and a hydrostatic head of 5,000 millimeters, so really good water resistance. But being a tunnel tent, the, it is low to the ground and there is a limited vestibule, or there used to be in the model that I had. But yeah, not a bad tent and the only Van Gogh to make this list this time around. Number four, now I've took a bit of a liberty here. It's actually tarp people a lot of more people this time around have used a tarp now i can't comment on what most tarps but i can comment on the dd hammocks super light tarp which i use quite a lot so tarp camping is a lot different to your uh, normal tent camping you're more open to the elements now some people might find that a bit sort of a bit dodgy but i've actually really enjoyed tarp camping in the last year uh, i went out in the middle of the winter to test out my rab sleeping bag and bivy bag and i was toasty in there but you can look out at the stars i've also used it in the early summer when i went out with my friend stan and i love it so the dd hammock super light tarp is priced around 70 80 quid and it's three meters by three meters. It comes with four pegs, so I have actually bought additional pegs. It's got plenty of extra guy lines in there, so you can peg it out. And it's made of a ripstop nylon with a 3,000 millimeter hydrostatic head. Obviously, with a tarp, you can also use it to sort of cover up when you go camping in a hammock, so it's quite versatile. But at coming in around 500 grams, it is really lightweight in your pack. So if you are using hiking poles for your hiking then you can use those to stick the tarp up just sleep under it with a bivy and a sleeping bag and uh, yeah you've got a really lightweight tent option so it's really good to see tarp feature in this list at number four number three the nature hike cloud up so the nature hike cloud up also featured in the last top 10 list in exactly the same position number three it's a great little freestanding tent lightweight four season there's plenty of color options it's freestanding tent it's designed to put up the inner first but you can using the mat and the the poles you can drape the outer skin up first and then put the inner skin up in inside of that in sort of more extreme weathers nature hike has been a good company in listening to what people's concerns are about their tents and making improvements and the cloud up 
has been improved in ways such as extra guy lines, uh, extra windows to reduce condensation. A lot of the nature hike tents, they are quite short. Some people like would prefer a longer tent. And also the, there is the added con of the cloud up is that it's only one entrance at the front of the tent. Uh, a lot of people like to be able to access but via the side. But it's been a great tent for me. I've always loved it. The cloud up too. Number two also featured in the last one at number five. So this is one has risen and it is another nature hike tent. It is the nature hike cloud peak two. Now when I recorded the last top 10 video, I hadn't used the cloud peak two, but I was quite interested in it. This time around, I do own it. So I know a bit more about it, the pros and the cons. It is a four season tent. It is really resilient. It's got a geodesic dome design, but it's three poles that bend over each other. So it's really nice and sturdy. Um, it's quite roomy inside, it's quite high. The vestibules are quite sort of good size to cook your food in. Once you've put it up, it's all tied in together. So the outer and the inner go up at the same time, which is always beneficial. However, it does have this funny little cap that goes on the top and you clip it down, which I almost lost the first time I took it out in the wind as I was packing up. I didn't notice it fly off. I could have gone out in future, put that tent up and then only then realized that there's a big hole in the top that isn't waterproof. But that roof cap is designed to give it good ventilation, which it does. It's a 15D nylon fly sheet with a 2000 millimeter hydrostatic head. So as I said, the one of the cons is the roof cap, which some people have said just like, you know, tie on with a bit of a cable tie and you'll never lose it. And the other thing that lets it down is the zips. I've never had a tent with zips that snag as much as this tent. Um, but apart from that, it's really robust. However, it is quite heavy at 2.5 kilograms. It is one of the heavier tents in this uh, list. And finally, the number one tent. It is the same as last time, and it is the 3FUL Lantern. Now, this Hulkdralite backpacking tent weighs in between 1.2 and 1.4 kilograms. There's lots of different options out there. You can buy the single skins, you can buy winter versions. It's great because the outer and the inner go up together. The fabric has a five milliliter hydrostatic head, so a really good hydrostatic head. But one of the cons that I found with it, uh, you do have to do the seam sealing yourself. That's all put me off. Also the lantern, for me, it's one of the most faffiest tents to put up. I can never seem to get it right when I put it up. It always looks like it's been trodden on. Uh, but you guys swear by it once again it was a clear winner there was it was miles ahead of everyone else it is lightweight you use your trekking poles so like the tarp it is a great lightweight option so there you go that is the top 10 backpacking tents as voted by you of 2022 so thanks everyone for taking part see you all again soon chase